All right, guys, the stars continue to roll in. Joined right now by Kyle Turley, former NFL star. We have a lot to cover with him here from the NFL Media Center at the Dallas Share, NellisCannon.com and PittsburghSportsReport.com. Kyle, first and foremost, man, you've been making the rounds today. I really appreciate you finding time for us this afternoon. Uh, you know, it's this great opportunity that I get to take part of every year annually, come down to Radio Row uh, to uh, you know, talk about what I have going on, man, and it's just great to have you guys have me on the show. I appreciate it. My pleasure. You've always struck me as a guy who gets the most out of it. I recall during the seasons you played, you never, ever let any – Oh, what's that grass grow under your feet? You told it the way it was, and you've developed that even further away from the game. Man, I just try to enjoy life, and I'm passionate about things I do. I was passionate about the game of football. I'm passionate about my music. I'm passionate about my causes that I fight for. And um, you know, I just try to keep going, man, and keep living life and uh, making the world hopefully a better place. <laughs> yeah, I talked to Rocky Blair once about that, and I asked him about uh, He asked me about where certain things were going in my life, and I said I was uncertain if I wanted to do something I'd done before. And he went, why would you? It's your life. Yeah, You know, exactly. you got to have that attitude about things. That's exactly right, man, and that's what I try to do. You know, uh, you have certain things that have certain – lengths a period of time that you can do the game of football was a, uh, a period of my life I was able to participate in and, and uh, play a, a kid's game for a king's ransom in the NFL and um, enjoy the the accolades of being an NFL superstar if you will uh, I mean I enjoyed those things and they were great great opportunities but uh, life continues to move on and you got to transition and do different things and um, I just try to surround myself with good people and positive things and and just keep doing what I'm doing very cool let me ask you about what you're doing right now Obviously, music's a big part of what you're doing. Yeah, well, I've always played music. Those that know my career and football sure. the best, they know that my music was always a part of my life. And so uh, being done with football, I've just made that transition into the music world, and, and it's gone very well. Uh, and I live in Nashville, so I'm around a ton of talent and uh, been out on the, uh, you know, doing the circuit around there and allowed me to, to, to grow and become uh, you know, a guy that could cut a record and, and then get out there, put a band together, and be on the road and tour. And I've had unbelievable experiences and opportunities come about just because I've uh, I've uh, you know, opened another door of opportunity and, and, and walked through it. Yeah, and, and I, uh, yeah, I talk about that all the time, man. you got to take yeah. advantage of it. If you put this piece together and that piece together, then you have an opportunity to develop a whole new piece and not just uh, rest on what you've done. Now, we want to talk about the cause you're here for as well, your management, your album, Anger Management, is out. I know your influences, Pantera, Slayer. Johnny Cash, of course, you know, uh, biblical in some ways, and of course Hank Jr. I saw Hank Jr. with Kid Rock after a Steelers Super Bowl party or during one, about four or five in the morning. And he said, "Kid, we got to go." And Bob says, "What do you mean we got to go?" He said, "We got to go play." It was four or five in the morning. The guy's <laughs> always playing. He's passionate as well. Talk about your influences. Well, you know, yeah, I, I grew up. Uh, my old man was a truck driver and a farmer. You know, very hardworking family. We had five kids and uh, came from, uh, you know, very sobering means. Um, as a young man growing up, so the, the the southern rock and old school country was a huge influence in my life. And then growing up uh, from about 10 years old on was in Southern California where my mom grew up, and uh, uh, we lived it. We moved there then, and I, heavy metal, punk rock. I was a skateboarder, surfer kid, and didn't play football until my senior year of high school football. So, uh, but once I did take that path, you know, that was something that I wanted to do always. It just escaped me. But when I had that opportunity, I grabbed it and took it and didn't let it go. Uh, and much like I'm doing with my music career, uh, now I have this opportunity and I'm just going to continue to keep going down the road and making the, the best of the situations that I have. You know, my motto is five or 5,000. If there are five people there or 5,000, it shouldn't matter and I should give everything I have and, and the greats that I've researched in, you know, from, uh, you know, country to rock to metal to rap to R&B to reggae, uh, you know, my favorite artists, they all uh, talk about those things. That's very good, I, and I like hearing about those things and like watching people like you do something about it. Quickly, obviously, all pro in 2000, Rams, Chiefs, Saints, that's all in the past, but the sciatic nerve damage, that was a big part of your past. It ended your game, so to speak, and now gridirongreats.org with Mike Ditka. Talk about that. Well, you know, the reality, as you mentioned, of the game is that it is a brutal sport yeah. um, and there are repercussions uh, physically after it's done and over. Uh, you know, and those of us that have enjoyed lengthy careers, um, you know, it takes a, a heavier toll on, you know, that greatness and that those accolades, you know, those those gold jackets they give out at the Hall of Fame, they come with a price and yeah. that price was paid by a lot of guys. And for us to enjoy the, the benefits that we are uh, with this great game and we're talking everybody, um, you know, the public included uh, to be able to go to these brand new 
these stadiums and, and have these experiences and, and sit at home and watch your direct TV and have all your games and watch those things, that came at a price. No, and, no. and the price was paid by the players that came before me and, and myself and, and, and uh, will come from the players that are playing now in the future. The history of the National Football League will always be its success. And uh, I just try to give back to that. The Gridiron Greats is an organization started by Mike Dick and Gail Sayers to help out in dire situations of medical and financial need by retired football players and um, you know we try to take care of our own but we try to enlist the public to do so as well um, those that feel so inclined to do so because of the game of football and their love for it and you know what it's not a big price to pay for them to be involved in it because like you said they've uh, we've all uh, enjoyed uh, what we get but there's as you said a price and, and in some ways to help out the players to help make that possible at gridirongreats.org very important I know there's an actual auction going on Mike's got a big party here and I've talked to him before about it he's very passionate thanks for sharing that passion man thanks for being here today hey no problem thank you guys for having me and uh, my music's all on iTunes so everybody go take a listen to it and I'll be touring around the country this whole year so if uh, we're anywhere close to you go to gridironrecords.com for my tour schedule and we'll be uh, out playing and hopefully we'll play in front of you you feel free to sell it brother you can do whatever you want hey, right man. now hey proceeds of my record sales and everything I do go to the gridiron greats so you know I'm doing what I do I want I'm out there on the hustle trying to make this thing happen but at the same time I don't forget where I came from. Thanks so much, Scott. We appreciate it. All right, thanks a lot.